What's up guys? My name is Olivia, also known as Jetlag Live, and I've been traveling the world for the past five years. In doing that, it's changed my life. But I know travel is a little scary, so I've got 45 tips and tricks that I've picked up along the years that I want to share with you guys and encourage you to travel the world. Following these tips and tricks will make that experience less of a shock, um, maybe more feasible or maybe less intimidating, whatever it may be, I hope at least one of these help you. Let's get into them. There's a lot, so we're gonna do like a rapid fire approach and get right into it. I'm gonna try and organize these from before you go and then once you're there, so the less chaotic of a list, okay? So tip number one, you're going to buy your airfare on a Saturday. It's notoriously lower and statistically, it's gonna be the best bang for your buck. Next up, you're going to fly on a Tuesday. Tuesday's the best time to fly and that's usually when you buy on Saturday, that ticket on Tuesday is gonna be the best deal. You know what I'm saying? If you're gone for a long period of time, sometimes it's overwhelming what to pack. So I've got a couple tips for that too. You're gonna use packing cubes. These are crucial, fundamental in any traveler's arsenal. You're gonna find packing cubes. My personal fave is to pack on a carry-on. I know it sounds intimidating. I've got videos on it, tutorials on it. It's just the best way to travel light because when you're traveling light in your destination, it's gonna be way less overwhelming and it's nice to have everything on your person or near you and not have to worry about a ton of bags. Make sure you are making copies of your documents. So if you need your passport, you need your license, maybe you go ahead and you do a photocopy of that or maybe your vaccination card, you need to make a photocopy of that. Carry those photocopies with you just in case, you never know, and that's, that's the motto, you never know what's gonna happen, so it's better to be prepared than screwed. <laughs> You're gonna pack earplugs. I know, it's something so small, but it can make a big difference on the flight and the destination if you didn't know there was a huge festival going on right outside of your hotel. While you bring those earplugs, make sure you're packing an eye mask. If it's a super long haul flight and you wanna catch some Zs, you will be surprised how freaking bright 36 Bs screen is in their seat and it's blasting you in the face and you just want to catch some Z's because you're tired, bring an eye mask, it will really help you out. Also, if it is a long flight or any flight at all, like maybe two hours plus, I recommend compression socks. I love these things, they changed my life as soon as I started wearing them. I wasn't getting those achy legs and knees and the works when I started wearing these socks and they are just, highly recommend those. When you're on that plane, wipe down the seats. Not just the seats, the armrests, the head, the back, the butt, the seat belt, and the tray table. And if there's a screen, you're gonna wipe down the screen. Whatever you would normally be touching during these long flights, you can kind of forget and touch your face and get sick and you don't wanna get sick for your trip. So just wipe down the seats. For packing, there's some clothes you wanna bring. Outfit repeating is totally okay. While you're packing, don't forget to bring anti-diarrheal. Just trust me. <laughs> the foods and other cultures will shock your system, your digestive system, so it's best to be prepared. When you're on the plane, if you want more food, just ask. Just ask politely and nicely, and the flight attendant might be able to help you out and get you an extra sandwich, maybe an extra side or something of the likes. Make sure you pack a basic first aid kit. Goes without saying, some people forget, even if it's just Band-Aids and Neosporin. My next one, bring a reusable water bottle, okay? Yeah, it's gonna be important. And then of course, bring hand sand. Obviously this goes without saying, but you wanna bring it just in case. Make sure you bring a lightweight towel or sarong, okay? These are universal things that you're gonna be so grateful you brought because they are extremely versatile. Maybe you need a blanket for the beach. Maybe you need to cover up your shoulders for a shrine you're going to or a temple. Maybe you need to keep the sun off of your scalp because it's on fire and it's bright. There are a bunch of different ways you can utilize that and I recommend bringing one just in case. Okay, now we're gonna shift to once you're in this foreign place, I've got major tips here. Let's get into it. In a lot of places you'll find you don't flush the toilet paper and all of your toilet paper, yes, your used nasty toilet paper goes in this trash can and doesn't get flushed. It has something to do with the septic systems of some countries aren't as developed as the United States where I'm from, where we flush the toilet paper, so yeah. Some places you don't, it never hurts to check and ask, um, or obviously if there's a trash can, like obviously right there, that usually means the toilet paper goes in there. 
in this country, if somebody is standing outside of a restaurant trying to get you in, do not go there. That is a tourist trap and that's what you wanna avoid because the food's gonna be way more expensive, way less authentic and way less incredible as it could be. If someone's trying to get you to eat there, don't go there. <laughs> Which leads me to the next thing, try local cuisine, okay? That will change your life. You see a spot where there's a lot of locals, like they look maybe like they just got off of work, they're there with their family, try that spot. If you see a lot of locals, that's the spot you wanna go for the authentic, delicious cuisine. Get used to and embrace chaos. I know, for me, really was a shock to try to do that, but I recommend it because that's how things get done in the, this place or that place. That chaos is part of the daily life and you just gotta enjoy it and experience it for what it is. So try to release the reins a little bit and just enjoy the beauty of organized chaos. When you go to a foreign land, do not expect anyone to speak your language. Nobody owes you to speak English, nobody owes you to speak Spanish, this, that, or the other, okay? Of course that bleeds into learn the basics of the native language of the place you're going. That will go a long way, it'll be respectful, and they will see that you're trying and they'll try to help you too. While you're in the country, Google search if that water is potable or not, okay? That's gonna help you when you're brushing your teeth, when you're taking a shower, don't open your mouth in that shower. Um, if you're gonna be going to refill your usable water bottle, don't do it if <laughs> they don't drink the water, okay? It's gonna save you and your stomach a little bit of a, um, a bit of a rough time, okay? So just do a quick Google search. Hey, can I drink the water here? You'll usually find an answer. When you're in a foreign country, go grocery shopping. If not to actually cook dinner, because a lot of people or some people don't wanna cook on vacation, I understand. Um, go to see the types of foods that they offer, because oftentimes it's different than your own, or it's fascinating to be like, oh wow, look what they have here. They, Look what's on the best sellers, like look what's right here. You know, it's fun to see all the different types of foods that you can get in different countries. If you're there and you're about to venture out, I recommend researching the weather, what you're gonna expect that can oftentimes change what you're gonna bring that day, what you're gonna do. And to extension, bonus tip here, research that country or that town or that place in advance. That way you know, hey, it's monsoon season. <laughs> Maybe I don't wanna go there. Or hey, it's 30 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think I'm gonna have a nice vacation there. I know I talked about the toilet paper, but the toilets themselves, you would be surprised. If you see a toilet kind of like this, you're meant to stand over and squat, okay? Talk about culture shock. I had no idea what to do when I saw a toilet like this, and I was like, you're not serious. But with a little bit of research, had I done that, I would've been so shocked, and maybe I would've found a different restroom, or maybe a more American restroom, or maybe I would have known how to go in that and tried it. Um, but yeah, just research the toilet situation if that's a concern for you. There is a thing called travel gut. Don't get it. Well, I get it sometimes um, and it's just not something you wanna do. So drink lots of water, watch what you're eating the day of, maybe no fried foods, and you're gonna try and stay regular that way. If you can, use a credit card with no foreign transaction fees when you're making purchases abroad. Get an in-country SIM card. If you need to be with your phone and have service, that's gonna be the best bet. Oftentimes it's pretty affordable. Learn to haggle. A lot of markets and places will decrease their prices. If you go in paying this amount, you're getting ripped off. If you're planning on visiting tourist attractions, make sure you go early in the morning. If you go before the crowds get there, you will enjoy not only the site itself, but the solitude and be able to take in that site without heaps and loads of people. Politely ask for a hotel upgrade if you're staying in one. Oftentimes you'll catch somebody on a good day and they'll be feeling generous. And usually there are rooms that you can be upgraded to for free. One of my most important tips is to be patient and respectful in these foreign countries. Patience and respect will go a long way when you're not in your own foreign town. And I know it can be overwhelming and scary and intimidating, but being patient and respectful of individuals and their cultures will be the perfect recipe for you. My next batch, which is just rapid fire tips that I couldn't categorize or that are important, whatever it may be, I've truly found that people are way nicer outside of the United States. Is that tea? 
Probably, I don't know, but it's also true. If you get cash, don't carry it all with you at once, obviously. Doesn't matter how safe a country is, things can happen. You don't wanna have all of your cash on you at all times. If possible, travel to these destinations in shoulder season, which basically means it's not high season where everybody's going there, and it's not low season where nobody wants to go there. That little middle section, perfect. If you're unsure of where to travel, try checking out a Lonely Planet book. I love Lonely Planet book. They are so not only full of like useful resources, but there's a little bit of history intertwined in there too about certain destinations and they'll share cool facts with you. And I just love those books and I highly recommend them. This one's gonna be tough, but don't over plan your trip. I know people need sometimes an itinerary by the hour, if not by the minute. Well, you'd be surprised at all the amazing things that can happen if you kind of like leave your itinerary open a little bit. Now this may be controversial, but I recommend avoiding taxis. Um, sometimes that is the best way to get around, but oftentimes if you want to take public transportation, you'll see more, you'll get to experience what a day in life there is like in that regard. And it's just a, a eye-opening, interesting experience. So I recommend getting travel insurance. <clears throat> when you're in Europe, I'm gonna do this. When you're in Europe, don't wear Nike running shoes with your outfit. Don't wear Nikes. Don't wear athletic shoes with your outfit. You will stick out like a sore thumb, okay? So my, I guess my tip really is to look up what these people in these countries would wear normally in order to blend in and immerse yourself with the people instead of observing the people. You wanna be one of the people so don't stick out like a sore thumb. You know what I mean? I suppose my last tip would be to have fun. So see it all, do it all, say yes to it all. And it will be such an incredible experience that I hope you'll come back and tell me how much fun it was on this video. And that's all I have for you guys. I really hope you enjoyed this. If you enjoyed any of these tips, learn from any of these tips, comment down below. Maybe leave your own tips that I didn't mention. And then we can use the comments as kind of like a resource. That would be cool. Um, I really appreciate you guys being here and I wish you the best, tra best of travels. I'm gonna be hitting the road soon for a year as a newly married woman. Um, come August. So I hope you'll stay along for the ride. Um, I can't wait to share it with you. Thank you guys so much for being here and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!